Good morning. Thank you for joining me. My name is Jessica, and we're going to start today by making sure we have all our props and then getting started. So please make sure you have a strap, two blocks, and a blanket. And then we're going to go ahead and start by making our way onto our backs. And when you find yourself on your back, just take a moment to land in whatever way feels best to you. So you might have your legs straight. You might have your legs bent. The soles of the feet might stay rooted on the floor. The soles of the feet might touch and the knees might open out. But you just allow yourself to land here. Notice where the arms are, if it feels like the hands feel best to be resting on the body, or if they can open out to the side. Neither is better, neither is worse. You're just noticing where you are at this moment. And once you've got the gross shape of the body, you'll start to pay attention to where it feels like your body is making contact with the floor. So maybe noticing where there is support underneath, maybe the shoulders, the head, the pelvis, maybe the soles of the feet, the backs of the legs, whatever is touching, the arms, maybe even the hands. And then you'll notice where there's space, maybe at the back of the neck, the low back, maybe underneath the knees, the ankles. Just observe where there's space. But in our practice today, we're just gonna focus on being really present, really aware of where there's groundedness and where there's spaciousness, there's lightness. And so I'd like you to start by toning the back of your throat and inviting in a gentle Ujjayi Pranayama. Once you start to tone the back of the throat, as this constriction audibly changes the sound of your breath, just notice where there is a sense of groundedness in the breath. And where it's almost touching something, and then where it feels light and buoyant. Take three more breath cycles on your own. Finding both the lightness and the weightedness of each breath. Last one. Next one. Okay, if the legs are straight, go ahead and bend the knees. Plant both feet on the floor and then walk your feet so they're hip distance apart. From here, you'll take a moment to pause and gather one knee into your chest, then gather the other knee into your chest. Hold on to the respective shin bone with the respective hand, and you might just rock very gently right to left, imprinting the low back in the spine, or rather low back and spine into the floor, and just noticing how that feels. And then once you've gone right to left a few times, you'll go ahead and come to center, just simply hug the knees into the chest while keeping your pelvis as rooted as possible. Still holding with right hand underneath right kneecap, left hand underneath left kneecap. Go ahead and inhale, straighten both arms and extend the thighs away from your chest, your toes drip towards the floor. As you exhale, just pull in the right knee, look towards the left, kick the left shoe more into the left hand. Inhale, come back into center, both legs away from you, both arms straight. And then exhale, draw the left knee in, look to the right, press the right shin further away. Inhale, come back to center, both knees away, both arms straight, head to center. And then exhale, repeat, right knee in, look to the left. Left shin forward. Inhale, center both arms straight, both legs away. Exhale, drop left knee and look towards the right, kick the right shin forward. And you've got two more sets on your own, and you're just following your breath, noticing a gentle stretch that comes to the neck. 
You might feel it on the side of the leg that you're pressing your shin into your hand. You might feel it on the opposite side. Wherever you feel it, just notice that. Notice where there's a sense of groundedness in the back body, so it's buoyancy and lightness, perhaps in the knees. And here's our last set. And you're just breathing. And then the next time you exhale and you hug that left knee into the chest, you'll inhale, both legs away, head back to center. Then exhale, just hug the knees into the chest. And inhale, both knees away, both arms straight. And exhale, hug it in. We'll do three more just like that, just to see how the breath is doing and how the back is doing. Muscle socks. Go ahead and gently release. Plant both feet on the floor and then open your arms out into a cactus or a T shape. Press down into your feet. Lift your pelvis up. Slide your bum to the right. Put your butt back down. Extend your left leg long. Draw your right foot to touch your left shin and let the leg cross over you towards the left. And now you can stay here. You might inchworm your hips a little bit more to the right if that needs to happen, or inchworm your left shoulder a little bit more to the left. But you'll bring your left hand on top of the right thigh. And then notice if you can find some space by drawing your left hip, sorry, your right hip away from your right shoulder. And you'll just pause and you'll breathe and you'll notice what this feels like. And then on your next in-breath, gently release your left hand back to that T or cactus shape. Unwind the spine, plant the right foot, draw the left foot in, re-square your butt underneath your shoulders, and then we'll take all of that to the other side. So press into the feet, lift your pelvis up, slide your bum to the left, put your bum back down, send the right leg long, join the left foot to the inside edge of your right thigh, and then you'll cross your left knee over to the right side of the body. Now you might need to inchworm your right shoulder more to the right. You might need to slide your bum a little bit more to the left. But ideally, we're working to try to get our head in line with the top of our pelvis. And then that top left hip rolls away from your left shoulder. You might find more opportunity to turn your gaze towards the left. But you're just pausing when you're breathing. And then very gently, you know, release that right hand. You'll plant the left foot, draw in the right foot, re-square your butt, and make sure your feet are hip distance apart. Now from here, go ahead and locate one of your blocks. Grab said block and plant it in between your inner upper thighs. From there, you might need to walk your bum closer to your feet or your feet closer to your bum, whatever works best for you. We're just going to take a few bridges here. So you'll inhale, push through the feet, lift the hips, lift the arms up and over your head. And then exhale, lower your hips and lower your hands back to that starting position. So we'll do that one more time. So inhale, push through feet, push through hips, lift, or rather, lift hips, lift hands. And then exhale, lower hips and lower hands. You can repeat that two more times with the arms or just keep the arms alongside your hips as you lift and lower your hips. Last one, inhale, push down to lift up. And exhale, lower down. Keep your hands alongside your hips. Inhale, push down, lift up. Go ahead and walk one shoulder blade underneath you, the other shoulder blade underneath you. You can keep the palms pressing down into the floor and just lift your hips. You might grab your outer ankles. You might interlace your hands behind your back. You might even walk the shoulder blades underneath you a little bit more, but we're paying attention to the breath. So squeezing that block. Noticing where the breath is and seeing if we can slide our tailbone and our shin bones away from our skull. 
Notice where you're grounded and notice where there's a lift. Last breath cycle here. Nice job. Gently untuck the shoulders, release the hands if they're clasped, and lower your pelvis back down to the floor. You might then need to wiggle the shoulders out a little further, and you'll just pause, and you'll breathe, and you'll notice what you notice. Where is their groundedness, and where is their lift? In order for us to rise, it's one of those very interesting things, but in ballet, in order to jump, which is like taking the pinnacle of height, you really have to push down first in order to do a releve, which is basically a balance on the ball of your foot or if you're in point on the tips of your toes, you have to push down to lift up. That's all we're finding here. In order to fly, in order to soar, in order to reach new heights, we have to ground first. Awesome sauce. Okay, let's go ahead and move on. So keep that block in between your thighs. Bring your hands to the back of your head, and you're going to interlace your hands at the back of your head. Now, point your elbows straight up to the sky. I don't know what they're looking like. It's almost like you're on a reverse table. And then you're going to take a big breath in here. Top of your inhalation, push your, or hold your breath, push your low back into the floor. And as you exhale, curl your shoulders, your head, your elbows towards your knees. And then inhale, lower your head back down. Top of the inhalation, push your low back into the floor, holding the breath. Exhale, curl the shoulders, the elbows up and towards your knees. Hold the breath out, squeeze your block, lift your tail. Yep. Inhale, lower the head back down, top of the inhalation, hold the breath, push the low back into the floor. Exhale, squeeze the abdomen, lift the elbows towards the shin bones, hold the breath out, squeeze the block, curl the tailbone under. Yep. Inhale, lower down, top of the inhalation, press the low back into the floor, hold the breath. Exhale, curl the elbows, the shoulders, the head up towards the shin bones. Squeeze the thighs into the block. Lift the tailbone into the block. Inhale, lower the head back down. Top of the in-breath, hold the breath. Push the low back into the floor. Exhale, start to curl head, shoulders, neck, chest towards your knees. Squeeze the block, hold the breath out. Lift the tailbone up. Inhale, lower the head back down, two more. Top of the inhalation, push the low back into the floor. Exhale, squeeze the shoulder blades onto back, lift shoulders and elbows towards thighs. Hold the breath out, squeeze the block, curl the tailbone up, yep. Inhale, lower down, last set. Top of inhale, push the low back into the floor, holding the breath. Exhale, curling shoulders, head, neck up and away from the floor. Hold the breath out, squeeze the block, lift the tailbone towards the block, yep. And inhale, lower down. Take a moment to pause and take a moment to breathe. Now, ideally through all of that, your butt literally stayed glued to the floor. It stayed grounded. And it was just the tailbone that curled up internally. I mean, it does move, but it's more of an internal action. And so we're going to go ahead and add on to that same general concept. So this time you'll lift your knees, or rather your shins, so that they are parallel to the floor. And you might need to readjust that block that's too close to your pelvis. And then bring your hands to the back of your head once again. Take awkward opposite interlace behind your skull. Draw the elbows up towards the sky, like, I don't know, little legs of a table. And you're going to Barbie point your feet. So your toes are pulling back to your knees or pressing out through the big toes. Take a big breath in here. As you inhale, hold that breath, or at the top of your inhale, hold that breath, push the low back into the floor. Exhale, curl the shoulders, the head, the elbows towards your knees. Yep, hold the breath out, squeeze your block, lift your tailbone towards your block, and then inhale, lower the head back down, top of the in-breath, press the low back into the floor. Exhale, curl shoulders, elbows towards your knees, hold the breath out, squeeze the block, curl the tail, yep, 
Inhale, low, lower back down, hold the breath, push the low back into the floor. Exhale, curl shoulders, elbows up towards the block, hold the breath out, squeeze the block, lift the tail. Yep, three more. Inhale, lower down, hold the breath, push the low back into the floor. Exhale, curl shoulders, head, chest up towards the thighs, hold the breath out, squeeze the block, curl the tail, low back. Yep, inhale, lower down. Hold the breath, push the low back into the floor. Exhale, curl shoulders, elbows towards thighs. Hold the breath out, squeeze the blood, curl the tail. Yep, last time, inhale, lower down. Hold the breath, push the low back into the floor. Exhale, curl up. Hold the breath out, squeeze the block, lift the tail. And we'll stay here for three. We'll stay here for two. Curl the tailbone for one. And relax. Nice job. Okay, and then you'll just notice again. Okay, laying down, where is their groundedness and where is their light? You might feel a lot more energy, buoyancy happening in the abdomen. You might also feel a little bit more groundedness, maybe in the shoulders, maybe in the pelvis. Just notice what you notice. Okay, let's go ahead and move on so you'll roll over to one of your sides start to make your way up to your hands and your knees and at this point i would encourage you to put your blocks toward the upper outer corners of your space i would encourage you to find your strap and then you might take your blanket and put it underneath your knees and then you're going to come forward to your hands and knees and separate your knees about hip distance apart. Curl both sets of toes under and start to push your bum back towards your heels. And you'll first check to make sure your pinky toes are tucked under and you might stay there and be like, yep, I'm happy as a clam. I'm going to work out here. And you'll just stay here and you'll breathe. If you'd like, you're going to continue to walk your hands back towards your pelvis and walk your spine up to vertical. And then we'll all just take a moment to grab our strap and you're going to unwind your strap. Now, word to the wise, if this is already too much for your feet, you can just come down and extend the tops of your feet to the floor. Otherwise, you can stay here and join us. Or if at some point it gets too much, you can come and stand on your shins. These are all viable options. But you're going to go ahead and grab your strap and you're going to open your strap so it's a little bit wider than your arms. And then you're going to inhale and lift the strap up. And exhale, draw it back. Now you'll notice that the wider your arms are, the easier this is. And the more narrow your arms are, the harder this is. So the first one might just be your test run, and you might need to readjust after you've taken that one. But we're just going to take a total of four of these. So you inhale to bring the arms up. And you exhale to lower the arms down. Inhale to come up. And exhale to go down. Inhale up. And exhale down. Last one. Inhale comes up. And exhale goes down. Okay. This time, inhale, come all the way up. And you'll stay here and you'll just pull the strap apart, draw the shoulder blades down the back, and we'll breathe for three, for two, for one. Nice job. Go ahead and bend the elbows about a third of the way and keep squeezing for three. Shoulder blades slide down for two. Low ribs draw in for one. Nice job. Bend the elbows even more. Think of hugging the shoulder blades onto the back, the elbows down to the waist, and pull for three. For two. Oh, for one. And then slowly straighten your arms up and overhead. Bring your arms forward and down. You might come forward and extend the tops of your feet to the floor if that suits you. And then we'll go ahead and maybe pitter patter the toes, and then we'll take this. One more time with the strap behind us. So now your palms are facing back. So before they were facing forward, now they're going to face back. And the hands are a little wider than your shoulders, and you'll pull it back. 
and you'll pull it wide. You'll draw your front ribs in and back. And lift the strap as high as you can from your butt. And then pull and hold for three. Pull and hold for two. Pull and hold for one. Nice job. And then release that. You can put the strap off to the side. If you haven't already, come forward, top to the feet to the floor, maybe pitter patter your toes, having a happy little temper tantrum. Conversely, you might also shift your weight back and take a counter stretch, lifting one end or both knees up and away from the floor. And then we'll go ahead and add on. So let's come back to hands and knees. And the first thing I'd like you to do is just take some cats and cows. So you'll inhale and lift the gaze. And you'll exhale and round through the spine. And as you take this three more times, you're just moving at your own breath pace. And again, we're paying attention. Where is the ground? How can you root into the hands to lift up through the inner armpits and around through the spine? And how can you push down into the thigh rows, into the shins to spread and widen and loose through the pelvis? And you're just noticing that these are two very integral or interrelated actions, pushing down to lift up. Awesome, that's awesome. All right, go ahead and come to a neutral spot. From here, tuck both sides of the toes under, walk your feet over to the right, slide your left foot back, spin your left foot all the way to the floor. And then you might wanna walk your right hands forward and to the right a little bit. And then you'll start to roll towards your left to stack your left shoulder on top of the right. Now, you can just let your left hand dangle if you want. You can bring the left hand to the back of your head. You can also bring your left hand to your pelvis. But whatever you're doing, I want you to push your left pinky toe all the way down into the floor. And then notice how that helps you lift up through the underside of the right side body. Then let your pelvis come forward a little bit like a Michael Jackson pelvis thrust or it all those hips and find a nice stretch that's going here across the front of your hip. You might even feel it here along the outside outer edge of your ribs and your hip area. And then you might replant that hand to the back of the head and with the left hand pushing lightly into the skull, the skull lightly pushing into the left fingertips. You can maybe lean back and just breathe and notice that you still press into the left pinky toe and pause and breathe. Awesome sauce. Go ahead and roll down to the mat and replant both hands and come back to hands and knees. And then we'll go ahead and try that on the other side. So curl both sets of toes under and walk your toes over to the left. Slide your right foot back, put your right foot down, and then maybe walk your left hand a little forward and slightly to the left. You might then continue to rotate that left leg so the left sole of the foot is perpendicular to the long edge of your mat. And then from here, that top arm, Maybe it just dangles over your head. Maybe the right hand is clasping into the back of the skull. Maybe the right hand is on the right hip. Whatever you're gonna do, you're gonna first push into the right pinky toe. And then notice how that helps you lift the under left side body. And then slide your tailbone forward. Your pelvis feels like it slides forward. And you might then bring your hand, your right hand to the back of your head and you curl your fingertips into your skull, lightly pushing the skull into the fingertips, the fingertips into the skull, and maybe you can lean back as you breathe all along your laterals to the side right, the right side of your body. And you're just pausing in your breathing and you're noticing where you can ground and where you can lift. Nice job. Go ahead and come back through center. Plant both hands underneath your shoulders, both knees underneath your hips, and just take a moment to pause here. We'll inhale, arch the spine, taking a cow-shaped pose. Then we'll exhale, round through the spine, taking a cat-shaped pose. And you'll do that one more time on your own. And we're just noticing how does it feel to really connect to what is present in our lives. You know, we can get very caught up in our thoughts and our minds and our aspirations. But in order for those aspirations to have fruition or come to fruition, they really have to be grounded. They have to be nurtured and nourished. 
So let's come back to a neutral tabletop position. First things first, make sure shoulders are over wrists, push down into the hands, push down into the thighs and hug up through the low belly. Then we'll start by maybe walking your knees a little bit closer towards each other. Slide your left leg back, tuck both sets of toes under. Now squeeze all the muscles around the left leg, lengthen your tailbone back like we did when we were curling into that block. And then you'll inhale and lift your left leg parallel to the floor. Make sure your left pinky toe is still pointing straight down, left knee is pointing straight down, left big toe is pressing straight back. Now push into both hands in order to draw the front ribs back and lengthen your tailbone back even more. You might stay there or you might crawl your right hand forward, floating it up parallel to the floor. And we'll hold for three. We'll hold for two. And we'll hold for one. Nice job. If you little lift to the right hand, lower it back down. Then lower the left leg down and come back to tabletop position. We'll go ahead and try that on the other side. So curl or extend your right leg back. Curl the toes under. Squeeze all the muscles around that right leg and hug the front two hip bones together as you lengthen your tailbone back. Now, push down through the hands. Draw the front ribs in and up and back, and then you'll lift your right leg up. Make sure the right pinky toe is pointing straight down, and notice if you need to shift your weight in your hand. Sometimes we can overcompensate one way or the other, so adjust if need be. And then you'll lengthen the tailbone back, close those front ribs, and maybe you'll stay here for the next few breaths. Maybe you'll walk your left hand forward and float your left arm parallel to the floor. But then you'll pause and breathe for three. Front ribs in and back for two. Push down into supporting limbs for one. Very gently, if you lift to that left hand, lower the left hand, lower the right leg, and come back to center. Awesome sauce. We'll go ahead and from here, walk your hands forward. Tuck both sets of toes under, gaze forward. And then exhale, start to push your bum up and back, coming towards a downward facing dog. And again, let's push down through the L shape of our hands to find the lift into our inner armpits. Wrap the triceps down to the floor as you lift up through the hips. Reach back through the inner thighs as you root down into the heels. And then notice that that helps you lift the kneecaps. Keep lifting through the inner armpits, softening any tension around your neck your jaw, your eyes, and then notice if you can take three breath cycles here. Your legs might be straight, your legs might be bent, but it's totally okay. We're paying attention to how we can push down into the floor in order to lift up and out of the floor. Uh, so it's off. All right, let's go ahead and inhale, come forward back to hands and knees. Walk your hands in a bit if you need to. Curl both sets of toes under and then walk your toes over to the right. Walk your right hand off and forward to the right. And then you'll roll to the right and grab the outside edge of your left ankle. Now, first things first, you want to look down and make sure your left hip, left knee are in one line so that thigh is parallel to the floor. Holding on to your left foot with your left hand, you'll barbie curl your toes around your arm and then push down into the right hand, push down into the right knee and start to roll your rib cage more towards the left. You can happily stay here lightly squeezing your left butt cheek, just breathing, or you can start to kick your left foot back and drawing your tailbone down towards your left knee. Both shoulder blades squeeze onto the back and sternum might come forward, heart might lift. And you're just pausing and you're breathing and you're noticing a little stretch potentially coming along that left arm. Awesome sauce. Go ahead and gently draw the left heel closer to the butt if it extended away. Extend your left leg long parallel to the floor and then extend your left arm parallel. So you can look down with one long line. You've got three. You're pushing down to lift up for two. And one, awesome sauce, slow that leg. Come back down to hands and knees. And then we'll go ahead and try all that on the other side. So curl both toes under, walk your feet to the left, walk your left hand off and slightly to the left and start to push down into the left hand, push down into the left knee to roll towards the left. Go ahead and grab your right ankle with your right hand. 
curl, Barbie, flight your toes around your right hand. Now push down into left hand, push down into left knee. Notice that that lets you roll your chest more towards the right. Now we'll make sure that right leg is parallel to the floor. And you can stay here just squeezing that right butt cheek, lengthening your tailbone down to your right knee. Or you might start to kick your right foot back, still curling the toes around your fingers, pushing down into the left hand. The heart comes forward and it feels like you arch back, tailbone curls down, and you'll pause and you'll breathe for three, for two, and for one. If the leg went back, hug the knee back in. Then go ahead and extend your right leg parallel to the floor, right arm parallel to the right leg. Probably they're touching. And you're just going to pause and breathe. You're squeezing that top hip pushing down to the left hand, lifting up through that left inner armpit. Awesome, so I'll lower the leg down, come back to hands and knees. And then we'll go ahead and pause. Take one of your blocks and slide that block in between your inner upper thighs, whatever works best for you. And then you're gonna walk your hands about a few inches forward, maybe not even, maybe about one inch forward, curl both sets of toes under. Push down through your hands to lift your hips high. And with that block now, you can squeeze into the block to send your inner thighs back and apart. Keep lifting through your inner armpits as you push down through the palms and wrap your shoulder blades down to the back. Lift the back of the head. Nice job. Awesome sauce. It's okay. Let's go ahead and come forward into following cost in a plank pose. This is the first one we've been in at, well, today at least during this session. And you might notice that, oh wow, your block feels really close to you. And if that's the case, you can move it, otherwise you can keep it there. But you're gonna push down through the hands, push down through the feet, lift up through the inner thighs, lengthen your tailbone back to the block, back towards the heels. And then see if you can reach your sternal cord and lift the back of your head just a millimeter. Awesome sauce. Lift your armpits a little bit more by pushing down into your hands. Roll to the knife edge of your left foot. And then you might start to stack your right shoulder on top of your left, hugging your hips. Now your left, sorry, your right hip has to come forward to lift up just a bit more. Awesome sauce. Then come back for plank. Push down through the hands to lift up through that right armpit. Roll to the knife edge of the right foot. Keep lifting through your right inner armpit as you stack your left shoulder. Now notice if that left hip needs to come forward and you lift and you reach up through that top arm. Awesome socks. Go ahead and come back through center. Walk your feet in a bit, lift your hips high, downward facing dog and pause. And you'll just notice how this feels. Again, we're rooting down to lift up. We're finding our grounding, our stability, our foundation so that we can soar and we can fly so we can find other things. Awesome sauce. Okay, lower your knees, remove your blocks, and then just bring both hands onto each of your blocks and step your right foot forward between your hands. So that blanket can probably stay there and you might keep it there, you might not, it's totally up to you, but you're gonna straighten that back leg long. And so now we're in this weird long runner's lunge. Spin your back foot to the floor so it's on the floor. So, yeah, that makes sense. And then you're gonna push your left pinky toes down to the floor. Go ahead and bring both blocks to the inside edge of your front foot, that's your right foot. So push down to the pinky toe edge of your front or your back foot. Push down to the center of your front foot. Push down into your front arm. And then notice that that lets you lift up through the right inner armpit. Left hand comes to left hip. And you're gonna push down through all these things so that you can find lift to rotate your rib cage towards the left. Now your left hand might stay alongside your left hip, parallel-ish. You might sweep it along the horizon so that it comes alongside your ears. Now you're gonna push down through the legs so we're not sinking into our flexibility, but we're pushing down and lifting up. And then the right rib cage wraps under, left rib cage comes up and we're an extended side angle. Nice job. Very gently, you'll turn your gaze back to the floor. You'll spin your left hand to the left block, spin to the ball of your back foot, left foot. Walk the right hand outside of the block, lower your back knee down. Walk the blocks up, walk your spine up, and take a moment to pause here. So push down into your front foot, push down into your back foot. 
hug those points together and notice how that allows the tailbone to descend and more of your upper spine to ascend, to float up. So now you might bring both hands onto the center of that right thigh. Go ahead and inhale, lift your left arm up and overhead, and then inhale, lift your left arm up and over, sorry, right hand up and overhead. And you might just clasp hands and reach up through both arms by pushing down through both legs and hugging both legs in. So the midline is really strong. You can choose to stay there or you can bend the left elbow and grab the left elbow with the right hand. Now, once you've done that, if you've done that, you can push the left elbow to the left as you pull it to the right. You're still working those legs like crazy. So the tailbone can descend and the heart can lift and you can find extra space reaching up. Nice work. Okay, if you bend the left elbow, extend the right arm, extend the left, and both hands come forward to the blocks. Walk your blocks forward, shift your butt back, straighten your front leg long, and we're in Ardha Hanumanasana. And again, you want to make sure that your front leg is as straight as it can be, toes are aligned with me. You want to make sure your spine is as long as it can be. So if you need to walk the hands back so the hands are underneath the shoulders, by all means do that, but we're pushing down into our legs, into your right foot, left knee to lift up through the vertebra, and you're pulling up through that right kneecap, softening the shoulders away from the ears, and just pausing and breathing. Nice work. All right, go ahead and inhale, shift your weight forward, bend that front knee, and then step your right foot to meet your left. Just take a moment to lower both hands to the floor, and then press back to downward facing dog and notice what you notice between the sides. How does one side feel in comparison to the other? Where do you find a little bit more spaciousness in the body? Where do you find a bit more rootedness in the body, stability in the body? Awesome sauce. Okay, go ahead and inhale, lower both knees back to the mat. Bring your hands back onto your blocks. And then We'll step the other foot through our hands, so left foot will come through. And you'll just take a moment here to maybe walk the blocks forward, tuck the back toes under, straighten the back leg long, and you're in this awkward runner's lunge for a moment, and just notice what that feels like across the front of your right hip. And then you'll spin the right sole of the foot to the floor, pause, press into that right pinky toe, bring the left block inside, the left foot and then let's take a moment to pause right hand can come to right hip push into the right pinky toes push into the center of your right sorry left heel push down into your left hand lift up through your inner left armpit and start to rotate your left rib cage towards the right right rib cage on top of left now you might extend out through that right arm and keep it there you might sweep it along the horizon and bring it alongside your ears but you're going to pause and you're going to breathe. And again, just as we did on the first side, you're pushing down into the legs. So we're not sinking into the pelvis. We're pushing down to lift up. And you're noticing how that gives you more space and opportunity to rotate towards the right. And then when you're ready to come out of it, your gaze will come back down towards the floor, lower the right hand. Walk the left hand outside of the right foot, spin to the ball of your back foot, and then lower your right knee down. From here, kindly encourage to turn blocks to highest settings and start to walk them back towards your hips. Pause there and <laughs> push down into your right knee, push down into your left foot, hug those points together, and then notice that that can allow the tailbone to descend and the sternum to lift. You might just press both hands into that left thigh. You might inhale and reach the right arm up. You might stay there. You might inhale and reach the left arm to meet it. You might clasp both hands, push down through both feet, hug them together and reach the ribs up and away from the descending pelvis. Or you might grab that right elbow, bending the right elbow and finding that nice little tricep latch stretch by pushing right elbow to the right pulling it to the left, hugging both inner thighs towards each other, tailbone descends, maybe heart, sternum lift a smidge. Awesome sauce. If you bent the right elbow, inhale with the left arm, lift the right, and exhale, both hands come down to the blocks. 
start to walk your blocks forward, shift your weight forward, and then shift your weight back in order to strain your front leg long. You might need to slide your left foot forward. You might need to walk your blocks back and lower a tick. But you're gonna find a place for you where you can find your grounding, pushing down to lift up. Noticing where the head is in alignment with the spine, the shoulders are in alignment with the heart. Awesome, uh, thoughts. Next in breath, go ahead and shift your weight forward. Plant the foot. Release the left foot back to meet the right. Walk the blocks off the sides of the mat, hands back down to the floor, and then we'll push down to lift our hips up and back, downward facing dog once again. And we'll just pause and we'll breathe. Inner arm hips lift, hips lift, feet descend, hands descend. And then on your next in breath, go ahead and inhale, gaze forward. As you exhale, step or float feet towards your hands. Take a moment to just fold at the hips, Uttanasana, maybe you grab opposite elbows. And again, you're finding that weight. How can the weight be evenly balanced on the inner and the outer edge of your foot, the front and the back of your foot, your right and your left foot? And then how does that groundedness through the feet enable a sense of rootedness, stability in the legs, which allows the spine to just drop allows the vertebra to find space, to find lift, as it were. Uh, some songs. Okay. Go ahead and release the hands to the floor. Slide your hands then up the shin, lift your spine parallel-ish to the floor. Push your shin bones forward into your palms, palms back into your shin bones. Slide the shoulders onto the back and the sternum forward. Lift the back of the skull by lifting through the palate of your mouth. And then you pause and breathe. Gently draw one hand to one hip. Gently draw the other hand to the other hip. Hug the shoulder blades onto the back and inhale. Push down to lift up. Once you're vertical, take a moment to pause. Pull, or rather press your hands into the pelvis, pelvis into the legs, legs into the floor, sternum lift, crown lift. Nice work. Okay. Let's go ahead and turn to face the sides of our space. I encourage you to bring one block to the upper corner of your mat, another block to the back corner of your mat. And then we're going to try just to balance and pose to see how that goes. So let's go ahead and turn our left toes into the right. Let's turn our right toes out to the right. And then you're going to go ahead and bend into that front knee. So uh, our first little warrior one. But you notice it's probably a lot smaller than it normally is. That's intentional. You're going to shift your weight forward. Right hand grabs right block, maybe. And we'll bring it outside of our right foot. Now I'm going to scoot back just for demonstration's sake, but you stay exactly where you are. Right hand will go forward, you'll shift your weight forward, you'll lift your back leg parallel to the floor. Awesome sauce. Now, just as we did when we were on our hands and knees, you're gonna push down into the right hand, push down into the right foot. With that left hand on the left hip, make sure it's parallel to the floor. So your left pinky toe has to lift up. And then the more you push down, you might take a slight bend in the right knee, push down into the right hand and the right foot. You can start to rotate the right rib cage to the left. You might then extend back through your left arm. You might float your left arm up. We're in half moon and you'll pause and you'll breathe. Maybe you'll smile. And then we'll gently come out. So left hand comes back to left hip. Gaze comes back to the floor. Bend your right knee a lot. Reach your left foot back for that mini warrior two. And then start to come back up to your mini warrior two vertical hands on hips. Uh -huh, and we did it. And then you go ahead and straighten that front leg long. Turn both feet parallel to the short edge of the mat. And then you'll just pause and you'll breathe. And your position is probably a lot smaller than what you would ordinarily take, but we'll just see how that goes. Cool. And then we'll try that on the other side. And if you'd like, you might just remove that blanket. So I'm going to scoot more towards the right side of my mat, but we do what works for you. We're going to turn our right toes to the left. We're going to turn our left toes to the left. And then hands still on our hips, we're like Captain Morgan, little mini 
or your two. Then you'll bend more into your left knee, reach out into your left hand, grab your left block. Left block comes behind your left foot, forward and slightly to the left, then shift your weight forward in order to lift your right leg. Now make sure that right leg is active, so you're flexing through the foot, you're lifting through your inner thigh. Right hand on right hip, push down into left hand, push down into left foot, start to rotate rib cage towards the right. Now you might stay here with your hand on your hip, you might extend your right hand parallel to the floor, you might float your right arm up, we're in half moon. We're pausing, we're breathing. And then we're ready to come out. Our right hand comes back to our right hip. Our gaze comes back to the floor. We bend into the left knee. We reach the right toes back. And we come back up for mini warrior two hands on hips, Captain Morgan style. Now go ahead and straighten that front leg long. And turn both feet in so they're parallel to the short edge of your mat. Now we're going to take our last little fold here. So if your hamstrings are more on the tight and strong side, you'll want to walk your feet really, really far apart. If your hamstrings are more on the loosey goosey side, you'll want to walk your feet in. So you choose what works for you, but make sure your pinky toes are lined up at the outer edges of your mat. Draw your shoulders up towards your ears and shoulder blades onto your back. Now, as though you're pulling that strap behind you, you'll hug shoulder blades onto the back. Notice that that lifts your heart. Now start to fold forward at your hips about halfway. Once you're halfway, pause, bring a slight bend to your knees. So then maybe lower one hand to the floor, lower the other hand to the floor. Then start to draw your chin to your chest and head towards the floor. And then you'll fold in towards your legs. And you'll just pause here and you'll breathe here. And you'll just notice what you notice. How's the breath working in the body? Where are you finding rootedness? Where are you finding stability? And where is that providing lift in the body? More importantly, how can you find that in your life? Where are you wanting to soar? Where are you wanting to fly? Where might you need to ground yourself a little bit more? Where might you need to establish more firm roots so that you can be grown, so that you can flourish? All right, let's gently come out of this. So hands underneath your shoulders. Inhale, lift your spine halfway. As you exhale, we're going to do a little funny thing. You're going to walk your hands as far forward as you need to so that you can then shift your weight forward. You're going to bend your knees and hop or step your feet together. Boop. Lower your knees to the mat. And then go ahead and sit down on your shins for a moment. And you'll just pause here for a brief moment. And you'll close your eyes and you'll breathe. You'll also notice if you feel like you want to curl forward into the last in a child's pose. And if that's the case, you'll do that. And you'll just put your forehead on the floor. And you'll pause there, arms alongside your hips. Otherwise, you're just sitting up. And you're pausing and you're breathing. Whichever shape you're in. So you're just noticing what feels best to you. Okay. We'll gently go ahead and open our eyes. We'll go ahead and bring your butt to the floor and extend your right leg out to the right and extend your left leg out to the left. So this is very similar to that shape we were just in. And it's about a 90 degree angle. So we're not like trying to be gymnast here. We're just doing a 90 degree angle. And you might find that this is really hard for you to do. And it feels like your back is rounding. You're making this burn shape. So if that's the case, go ahead and take your blanket and you'll put your butt on your blanket and you'll sit up on your blanket. The other option is you can slightly bend your knees so that the top of your sacrum so the top of your low back can come forward and you can sit up. So you'll choose whichever option allows you to be really, really tall in your spine. So you might sit on a blanket, you might be on the floor, but you'll sit as tall as you can. And then maybe keeping toes in alignment with knees, knees and toes both pointing up to the ceiling. You might start to walk forward, keeping your spine as long and straight as possible. And you might hang out there, you might be fine as wine, you might need to bring the block 
underneath your forehead. It just creates a little bit of grounding. We're gonna stay here for about three to five breaths. So you're just noticing where you can find even more stability, where you can find even more grounding. And then what that allows to open, or what that groundedness enables to flourish, to open, to soften. Last breath cycle here. Nice one. Okay. You're going to very gently come out of this shape. So you might start by walking your hands back to push down into the floor in order to walk the vertebra up to vertical. And then once you are vertical, if there's a walk there, you might need to move it. But you'll bring one hand underneath one knee and drop to center, the other hand under the other knee and drop back to center. And then we're going to slowly make our way onto our backs. So as you come onto your back, you just take a moment to pause. You'll notice if all the props that you like are somewhere nearby. And then I encourage you to come back to that first shape we started in and just observe and notice what you notice here. What parts of the body touch the floor, surrender, release into the floor? What parts of the body are buoyed away, lifted, flying away from the floor? Are they the same parts that were there at the very beginning of your practice? Has a sense of groundedness shifted? Has a sense of buoyancy shifted? I don't know about you, but for me very often my practice is that place where the grounding in my body, in my breath, in the present moment, it allows me to soar and shift in other ways. It gives me the opportunity to see other possibilities in my life. So as we're here for these last few breath cycles, I encourage you to check in and notice where the body still feels like it might want to ground a bit more so it can soar a bit more. And so for you, that might mean that you want to take a supine twist. It might mean that you want to take a figure four or a happy baby. But you just check in and see what feels best to you. And you'll give yourself permission to do that thing or those things. So once you feel complete, you'll start to make your way to your final resting shape. As you make your way there, there's no rush of place of video you can pause and you need to, but when you're ready, we'll make our way to our final shape. And as you do, I encourage you to take the first few breath cycles here to really fidget, to notice what you need in order to ground, in order to root. One of the interesting things about being alive is no two people need the same things all the time, or at least they don't have those needs met in the same way all the time. And so notice what you're needing in this moment and give yourself the opportunity to meet those needs in the best strategy you know how. And then once you come to stillness, Notice where you can soften the weight of the bones in the body just a bit more. Really allowing yourself to trust gravity, 
to the trust, the support of the floor, the support of the blocks. And then notice where you can soften the musculature around those bones. And then you may need to notice that it's the more the bones that you can ground, the more that the muscles can soften. The breath naturally starts to buoy, naturally starts to float, to fly more easily. Turn your awareness to your breath. As you come back to your breath, just take a moment to check in. Notice what you notice. If there's any part of you that longs to linger here for a few more moments, by all means, please continue to do so. When you are ready to move on, you'll start to invite small movement into your body, whatever way feels best to you. After you wiggled and yawned to your content, make your way over to your right side. Pause there for a moment. 
just receiving the support of the floor by giving your weight to it. And then gently you'll start to roll your chest more towards your hand, push into your left hand and release the right hand and walk your spine up to vertical. You are vertical, take an opportunity to sit on a block or a blanket, just elevating the pelvis a little bit. And go ahead and bring your left hand to your heart. Stack your right hand on top. Feel the weight of the left hand into the right, the weight of the right hand into the chest. Feel the lift of the chest back into the hands. Three more breath cycles here, just breathing into your heart, breathing into your hands. Ability to ground ourselves so that we can fly, that are literally flying like the superheroes in our lives, or literally just soaring and doing our best work possible. Maybe it was a gift. And that gift really comes from nurturing ourselves first, grounding, finding stability and nurturance, whatever way feels best to us. So as we end our practice today, I invite you to just take a moment to say an internal prayer of gratitude for the things that ground you, the things that help you soar and fly and the superheroes in your own life. When you feel complete, you'll draw your hands to heart center on Jimmy Mudra. Press the palms into each other. Receive the weight of the thumbs into the sternum and lift the sternum towards the thumbs. Gently exhale all the breath from your mouth. A big breath in, an audible breath out. Inhale for own joy if you like. To that light, to that grounding energy within me, I bow and salute that light and that grounding energy within me. Namaste. Thank you for joining me. Um, I hope you have a great rest of your day. Please let me know if you have any questions or comments.